I was four months pregnant at the time, which a lot of company didn't really want to work with that. And so I found this company. They were the only company that not only were they willing to work with me, they were excited for me. They were like, well, you're pregnant. Okay, well, we need to get you a remote job. Welcome to the Junior Jobs Podcast, where we interview recently hired junior developers to give you actionable job search advice relevant to today's job market. For today's interview, I'm talking with Prima Jenkins, who was a pregnant elementary school teacher before she got her first job in tech. So if you're also a career transitioner, let me know in the comments below what your job search struggles are, and I'll bring them up in future interviews. And our sponsor for today is David Roberts of Crushing Digital. They're offering our listeners 30% off their new video series called Standing Out in Tech, which covers every aspect of the junior developer job search. So just make sure to check out the link in the show notes and enter the code JUNIORJOBS30, one word, at checkout to get your discount. All right, Prima, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Glad to be here. Yes, thank you for, thank you for coming on. So before we get into it, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into coding? Yeah. So I was an elementary school teacher for over like seven years and just loved it, you know, thought I was going to do it for the rest of my life. But I think like a lot of people, the pandemic definitely planted a seed. I'm actually originally from Bangkok, Thailand. So you know, I still have a lot of family there. So the thought that if someone were to get sick and I would not be able to just hop on the plane, go see them because of my job, <laughs> you know, that was something that I started to think a lot at the time. So in the next school year, when we went in person, I was just thinking, I think I was more open-minded to like, maybe if there's an option out there where I can get a job that I can work remote, you know, I'll be open to it. And then I met this, I taught fourth grade. So I had this eight-year-old boy in my class who his dad was a software engineer. He loved to code. So I would let him code after he finished with his assignment. And, you know, I'm like in the back looking at what he's doing, got interested, then started to learn myself and then started researching, found that, hey, I could transition into a software engineering so talked to my husband, decided that maybe we could do it, you know, like take a year off of teaching, see where it goes. And when the opportunity came, I just like went for it. And so that's how I, I got into coding. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. You're not the only teacher that I've talked to who has had a similar experience. And there are a few jobs I can, that I can think of that are probably more flexible than a software engineering role. So perfect for <laughs> like the family responsibilities that, that you're talking about. Yeah. So here at the Junior Jobs channel, we are all about the job search. So let's talk specifically about how you learned to code and then how you found a job after you learned to code. Okay. Well, when I first started, I started with Khan Academy. And, you know, it's a free resource. Anybody could start. I enjoyed it, but I felt like I needed something more. And then the teacher in me felt like I need to go back to school. So I signed up for a coding boot camp and, you know, just went in, started to learn. And then the coding boot camp was nine months long. As I started the coding boot camp, I found out that I was pregnant, which was a, a happy surprise for us because we didn't think that we could get pregnant. So, you know, it was just like, yeah. But at the same time, I was like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, I need to earn. I need to bring in some income. So I was just like, just, let me just, you know, get this thing down. And then within four months of the coding boot camp, after I finished building my first full stack project, I felt like I was ready. So I started to apply. And as I started to apply... You know, I know that you don't have to disclose to people that you're pregnant. I was, I think I was four months pregnant at the time as well. But I felt like, I felt like I needed to because the last thing I want is like me joining a company and a team and, you know, everything's going peachy. And then I'm like, hey, I'm going to leave because I'm going to give birth. So 
I got, I think I gotten like two interviews. And when I disclosed that, you know, I got ghosted and I don't know if it's to do with my technical skill or the pregnancy, but you know, that was what was happening. I also talked to a bunch of companies that were, I say like talent placement company where they would train you specifically for the companies that are hiring. And the same thing was happening there as well. Because I was pregnant, there's a lot of things that came with it. One, I needed everything to be remote because, you know, I didn't want to just leave my daughter at home. I wanted to be home, being able to stay at home. I couldn't relocate because, because you know, like to relocate at that time, that's just, it's just too much, which a lot of company didn't really want to work with that. Mm -hmm. And so I found this company called Cook System. They were the only company that not only were they willing to work with me, they were excited for me. They were like, well, you're pregnant. Okay, well, we need to get you a remote job and you need to, you know, this and that. And, but they were honest with me. They were saying that because of the pregnancy and how after training, I would be like 10 months pregnant at the time. They might not be able to place me because, you know, like I would only be able to work for, not 10 months pregnant, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would be like eight months pregnant at the time. So they wouldn't be able to place me and then be, give birth. But we had an agreement that after three months after giving birth, they would, you know, be able to like place me in a, like in one of the companies that they're working with. So I was okay with that because I felt like, yeah, that was fair. And they worked with me on that. We. I did some Java training with them. So learn Java. That was really fun because I got to like work in a group and things like that. Then gave birth and right at the three month mark, I came back and I was like, hey, I'm ready to work. So then they started looking for a job for me. At the time, it was during like the all the layoffs. So... <laughs> You know, they were also having difficulty placing people within the companies that they're working with. And they did talk to me about like, hey, if you want to, you can apply on your own. And if you got a job on your own, that's that's OK with us, too. But on their end, they were looking. And I actually the day that I the day that I got my final interview with the job that I was interviewing with, they also found a job for me. <laughs> But, you know, I went with the, the job that I found on my own. Well, so that's great. That was... They still were so supportive throughout the process, even if you got a job, not through them. That's yeah. They sound like a, a good a good service and that they, they were very helpful for you. Can you repeat that for me? You said Cook Systems? Cook Systems, yep. And that's just C. Can you spell it out for me? C-O-O-K and okay. Systems. Systems. Okay. All right. Well, definitely it sounds like a good organization to work with if you want somebody to support you in that job search. Yeah. So then for the for the role that you actually did find, I mean, first I should say, congratulations on pushing through that that pregnancy. While you know, congratulations is, is an exciting time of life. It can definitely make things difficult, as I'm sure there's, you know, some inherent discrimination there as people, you know, don't want to train you just to have you leave right after you get hired. So congratulations on pushing through that. How did you find the role that you actually got then if it wasn't through Cook Systems? It was through cold applying, <laughs> which is, you know, it's not for everybody. I did attend a bunch of job fair. I thought that I was going to look for a company in EdTech. And I think it's also, you know, because I just gave birth. So I was like, I need to... You know, I'm a new mom. I need to find a job. I wasn't shy about, you know, after I apply for a job, I would look for recruiters on LinkedIn and then I would just send them a message. And I actually got two interviews from from that. But the job that I got was through co-applying on LinkedIn. And it was crazy because that day I had listened to someone said like, you know, when men apply for a job, they only look for like, oh, you know, I'm only qualified like 
20% or something, and then they would apply. But women make sure that we, you know, we're qualified for all of it. And maybe women need to kind of like stop that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to challenge myself and do that. So as I was looking at the qualification, they were looking for someone who knows C-sharp. I didn't know C-sharp, but I know object-oriented programming, <laughs> you know, SQL. I know SQL. And there was a, a bunch of other stuff that I wasn't familiar with, but I was like, I know SQL, so I'm just going to apply. Plus, they were an agile maturity assessment company, which I was talking to a friend about something, you know, on that topic. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Let me just apply. And, you know, the owner of the company reached out to me, asked me to fill out a form. I think they were looking for someone who's a good fit, not just a good developer, but a good fit. And after like interviewing with them and everything, they decided I was a good fit, you know. So, yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you mentioned LinkedIn. So what was your search criteria when you were looking for that role on LinkedIn? Or did it just show up in your feed? Or how did you find that specific opening? I went on LinkedIn and then I just search. I search software developer. I didn't put in junior because I used to search for like junior positions and associate software developer positions. But I realized that as I'm looking through the criteria, they're, you know, they're not really looking for a junior role. <laughs> they're looking just for a software developer. So I'm, so I felt like, you know what, I, I can debug, I, I can code, mm -hmm. you know, and if you give me time, I'll learn. So I just search software developer. I search remote jobs only because that was, you know, I can only work remote. Mm -hmm. And as I was just going through, those were just the only two things that I put, remote job and software developers. So, yeah. Great, good, good. Yeah, and I'm curious, you mentioned that company was specifically looking for somebody that would be a good fit. Uh, yes. I'm curious about your non-tech experience. There's this education work that you had done. Did that play a role in getting this current job? And if so, how did you pitch it? How did you sell your non-tech experience to help show that you'd be a good fit? In my, I think first through my resume, I made sure that my resume was, you know, it wasn't just like, hey, I did this in my work experience. It was more like action-based and result-based. Uh, so it's like, you know, 95% of students did this or something like, it wasn't just like mm -hmm. I met with parents. <laughs> You know, so first off, I made sure that my resume was good and it really showed what I was doing. When I was teaching, I took on a lot of leadership roles. So I put in a lot of things to do with communication, but I was very specific with what kind of communication I was doing. I wasn't just like, I'm good with communicating, you know, mm -hmm. I because I had hosted workshops to teach other teachers how to instruct a certain way. So I made sure that all my leadership roles, all those presentations that I have done were on my resume. And then also data. So I had to look at a lot of data and made a lot of data-driven decisions. And so I made sure that I had that there as well. And those were the things that I think made me interest look interesting to the founder of the company was that mm -hmm. one, like I understood about, you know, the data driven decision because it was an actual maturity assessment company. So they use data to, you know, help drive like performance. And then also my communication skill. I'm not nervous around people. I've given presentations, yeah. things like that. So all those soft skills really came in handy. Yeah. I just, making sure that those were listed on my resume and those were like the number one things apart from coding. Yeah, absolutely. I think you need to find the overlap between your established skill set, communication, leadership. Yeah, you got to find that overlap because it does carry over into the technical space. Even as a software engineer, you're still going to be embedded on a team. You're still going to be working with others. 
And if you can be a good communicator and you can lead initiatives, then you'll, you'll, you'll be effective in that role. I think what you mentioned about like being a software engineer, you have to work in a team. And that is so important because I feel like people who are transitioning from one career to the next don't realize that that's like the number one skill that they have over, you know, college grad. Because you've had experience working with other people, like in a team, even though it's not the same setting, but you've had that experience. And not everybody survives that, you know. Not everybody can work in a team and get along with people or know how to communicate and get your point across. So sell yourself in, in that skill. Yeah, how to work effectively with people with difficult personalities. Yes. <laughs> uh, definitely a, a learned skill for sure. Yeah. Well, Prima, this is a great conversation. Thank you so much for sharing your stories, uh, your, your, your struggles, and your ultimate triumph. Congratulations on the new baby as well. This is all the time we have for today, though. So thank you for joining and thank you to all that are listening. We will catch you all next time. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Junior Jobs Podcast. We hope you found today's interview helpful as you navigate your own job search in tech. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to like and subscribe as that helps us reach more developers in need. And don't forget to check the show notes for details on today's sponsor and other job search services that we provide. Thanks for listening and have a great day.